sithi esintwini inyanga yokuqala konyaka sithi ke ngumsintsi amazulu athi inyanga yamandulo ora pha ayiqaleni emandulo sasi sazi into ba umhlawu mashuma bina nesithathu inyanga yamalusuku lokuqala enyakini ora ke calendar siyisebenzisayo asisa kumhlawu kuqala ka January I welcome you all in this meeting in which we will be dealing with the CPE presentation. There have been several challenges that have been raised on the councils of CPE. I think we all know in the previous meetings, members have raised sometimes the professionalism, sometimes the issue of how this councils are run. So today we have requested that CPE, as the previous meetings, that CPE will have a meeting that will be dealing with CPE only, uh, not other um, entities of um, a Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. So that day is today. We will look at the report of CPE, um, advise where we can discuss issues and, and get all the necessary responses, which I hope they are also contained in the report that we'll be getting. There also has been a correspondence from the uh, one of the members of the portfolio committee, Honorable Hicklin, but we indicated to her that CPE will invite CPE properly to be part of our meeting as we usually do so when one of the entities, we can see that there are challenges CPE that need will to be discussed properly in, in the meeting. With those few words, um, honorable members, uh, deputy minister, acting DG and your team, CPE, the chairperson of the board, the CEO, the presidents of the councils, you are all welcomed. Ms. Martinez, on my side, I have only one apology. The apology of minister. Do you have any apologies on your side? Ms. Martinez? Yeah. Yes, Chair. Um, Honorable Verstappen also sent his. Yes, Chairperson. I'm not sure if I'm audible. Yes, we can hear. Honorable Verstappen has also sent his apology. Okay. We, we will, as we all know, um, on our members- Are you able to hear me, Chair? And, 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 and uh, the team that is here in the meetings and all those that are watching our committee meeting today, they must bear with us. Uh, we still have low shedding and when there is low, low shedding, there is an interference in the way the networks uh, run. So we'll have those challenges. If someone um, uh, is clear that uh, she can't speak properly when the video is on. You are allowed to switch off your video so that we can hear you properly. Um, over to you, DM. Thank you, thank you, um, Honorable Chairperson. A good morning to you, um, Chair and to the honorable members of the committee, uh, to the team from the department who are actually joining now. I also called the chair because I were experiencing problems with the link we had. Um, it, it was saying it's invalid. So it looks like they also have been stuck uh, in that situation of an invalid link. Uh, I hope that uh, Nola is able to help them because uh, I only managed to get uh, this one as I was calling you, Chair. Um, a bit that as it may, we are here to uh, present, which is a, the, the, out of the invitation of the committee, which we must uh, appreciate. Uh, because it, uh, for me, oversight helps us with the, uh, it, it's like a mirror. It, it provides you with this opportunity for you to see where you are making good and where you are falling short. 
and and therefore it it in in that context it it helps uh, to be called to the committee from time to time because that also provides you with an opportunity to see any blind spots that may be there in the uh, uh, continuation uh, of uh, with the work that uh, we are doing uh, in government. And uh, CBE being an entity which is more regulatory in terms of its functions, uh, coordinating the six uh, uh, professional councils in the built environment together with the charter councils. Uh, it, is, it does uh, help uh, us to get the kind of questions uh, that the committee has sent to us today uh, to say, how do we strengthen that uh, fun regulatory function? Uh, and, and therefore on the platform, um, there is the unit in the department that coordinates all our entities and CBE being one of those um, entities that coordinates other councils uh, as a council. I do have on the platform, uh, Mr. Adam Tombeni. I am trying to check on the platform if we do have um, the chair of, of CBE, Dr. Lamini, and uh, the CEO, Mr. Mieza. I know that uh, in the last few days, Mr. Mieza has not been well, um, but he has not said he would not be part of the meeting. I just assume that not, myself not seeing uh, him on the platform would be uh, that he might be having similar problems with the, with, with the link. Uh, but that being said, the presentation has been sent to the committee and um, um, we will, I'm not sure who has been able to now join from uh, CBE, but uh, chair joining uh, the meeting during the Heritage Month uh, also helps us to reflect because for me, Heritage Month means more than just what our heritage is. It provides us with an opportunity to check where we, who we are, where we come from, and where we are going to uh, as a nation. And, and therefore, um, participating in activities of this month uh, provides us, us also uh, in a similar fashion with that opportunity to reflect uh, on 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 uh, on where we are going to, and therefore this is the for me an opportune time uh, that we appear before the committee uh, to do just that. Um, Adam DDG for intergovernmental uh, relations and coordination is is on the platform. He will then help me if. Um, with the leadership of uh, CBE as to, I now see uh, Mr. Mieza is on the platform um, who, and I take it he will be presenting, but uh, Adam as the TDG responsible for the unit um, that deals with our entities is on the platform. I will hand over to DDG um, Tombeni and Mr. Msiza, I'm not sure who from the board is on the platform. Um, no, Mr. Mieza, not Mr. Msiza. Is Msiza Abantu Abakur, Mkoko Numkur Mieza is the surname. Um, thank you, Chair, for having us and over to you. Um, good morning, Chair. Good morning to DM. Um, uh, with us here to deal with the matters at hand, uh, which uh, the Portfolio Committee has requested us to come and present. It will be, as the DM indicated, the management from the entity, 
uh, under the leadership of the CEO, uh, Mr. Msiza, who will sort of take us through the presentation. What I want to indicate, uh, Chairperson and members, is that uh, from the department side, we there as an intergovernmental relations branch, as a linking uh, unit uh, entity with the, with the entities, we're trying to support in all the areas of governance to, to the entity and also to ensure that the shareholder uh, with the DM, they're able to be appraised with all the issues of governance at the entities and all the operations that are taking place uh, at the entity. So we are the interface with that to support uh, this uh, entity CPE, which is before us. And uh, what I want to indicate is that the presentation which has been sent to members is the presentation which as a department we also had a look at, we also interacted with it. So we are there to support in the areas where a portfolio committee will need clarity from policy perspective, from shareholder perspective. And uh, what also guide us in the department is that we do have a signed shareholder com uh, compact with this entity where we state uh, roles and responsibilities, areas of accountabilities from the entity. We also do the reviews around that. And uh, at the later stage, uh, you remember each person um, who may be able to share again the signed shareholder compact is the one which we shared with the members upon their request for all entities. So yeah, those are the opening comments from the department, just to make an emphasis to say, we are on board on this matter before us to strengthen the regulatory, uh, I mean, authority of this entity and to deal with all the areas where there are challenges so that this entity is able to say that, Chairperson, I will just give it to the CEO just to take us through the content of the presentation. We are sorry with the mishap when we started we had a challenge with the connectivity. The link which we're having, it was showing we're not connecting properly. So we had to spend almost uh, 10 minutes trying to establish a correct link. And uh, we're happy that the community secretary was able to help us. So we are here at the platform. Thank you too. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, the, the Chair of the CPE board, uh, Dr. Lamini, is on the platform together with the CEO, uh, Mr. Mieza and, uh, and their, their team. Uh, Dr. Lamini? Uh, good, good morning, uh, Chairperson. Uh, good morning, DM. Am I, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, um, yeah, um, thanks, thanks for the opportunity. And um, yes, um, we um, will be um, uh, uh, make a presentation that was circulated. Uh, and um, uh, fundamentally, I think um, uh, 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 where the CP is, uh, is that um, um, the uh, current APP, uh, are a reflection um, of um, a, an alignment uh, with um, our transformation strategy um, a, a, as conceptualized in the individual transformation uh, collaborative uh, uh, committees uh, programs of action um, and um, uh, also uh, um, uh, which um, are uh, speaking to a, 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 a strategic a, a government goals in terms of uh, a, a transition and job creation. Uh, secondly, we are also um, 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 uh, uh, um, as part of uh, 
uh, what is currently um, um, uh, uh, being implemented through the uh, transformation collaborative uh, 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 committees, um, uh, uh, foc focusing um, on um, uh, 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 skills development uh, in terms of um, enterprise development uh, and um, uh, uh, creation of opportunities uh, 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 for young people. Uh, and then finally, um, um, uh, uh, issues of uh, uh, women empowerment. Um, and then um, uh, in doing all this, uh, Chairperson, um, 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 the CPE, uh, uh, because uh, our mandate is very clear that um, uh, it's really to um, uh, uh, regulate, advise, and coordinate uh, the work of the uh, six built environment uh, uh, profile councils um, and other strategic partners uh, uh, within the sector. So um, uh, we are having those engagements uh, that reach out uh, to make sure that uh, as many um, as possible people uh, are participating in the pro programs uh, of the entity, uh, especially um, uh, uh, people uh, uh, from uh, uh, disadvantaged uh, uh, backgrounds uh, and also that lie maybe in remote uh, 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 geographic uh, 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 areas and uh, following uh, uh, government's uh, 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 district uh, uh, development uh, model. Uh, we are making those strides to make sure that uh, 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 the CPE um, um, uh, uh, presence um, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, felt and realized and ensure that uh, um, uh, in, even in, in, in remote areas, uh, people are aware about the kind of interventions uh, that the entity is making. But the CEO will take us through the comprehensive uh, uh, presentation. Over to you. Thank you. Good morning, uh, member of, 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 of the committee, uh, chairperson of the committee, deputy minister and colleagues. I hope I am audible. Um, my, my name is Mrs. Miaza. I'm leading the team. With me, I'm with uh, Ms. Nanam Klongo, who's the CEO, the CEO uh, as well as uh, Ms. Lindy and Mitonia and, and Putin is trying to join. I think he's just joined already. Uh, Deputy Minister and, and Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, we, we, we have been requested to make this submission to the committee on the question that was raised around the work that we are doing in strengthening the, uh, uh, the, 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 the collaboration between ourselves and, and, and Council, especially in relation to our regulatory function. Um, so the presentation will, will try and address that particular uh, question, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, just to, to, to begin with, uh, just to build on what the Chairperson has raised, Dr. Lamini, um, you, re you remember, Chair, that uh, in November last year, we, when we appeared in front of the committee, we indicated that we currently or initiated the process of a 20 year review, uh, which we are currently uh, busy finalizing. And I think once the, the study has been concluded, we'll then be able to process it through appropriate structures. And I think the timing of that exercise, Chair, uh, enabled us to not only to record what transpired in the last 20 years or the last 20 years of existence of this organization, but also to, to take lessons on the work that we've done uh, and some of the failures that uh, we need to correct, uh, as well as re-platform the organization on how best we can improve the work that we do uh, moving forward. That, that's really the, the, the essence of the exercise. There are some of the emerging issues that are coming up, which we are addressing. Um, as part of that process, we, we will be able to begin to respond to the question that has been posed towards us. And I think importantly, the question that uh, is, keeps coming on various exercises that have been undertaken as an organization relates to how best do we fulfill our mandate as an entity? Uh, uh, to ensure that mainly we protect the, the, the public in relation to the work that is done by our members. Uh, and, and secondly, how, how do we ensure that in the work that we do, we focus on issues of transformation, issues of governance, uh, and how do we ensure that while we, we are an organization on our own, but we start uh, focusing on the work that we must do in an outward uh, out, outlook focus than just being internally focused 
as, as, as in terms of the work that we've been doing over the, over the past couple of years. And, and the other issue that we're beginning to amplify is to uh, elevate the work of the organization around the public interest, uh, around the role that we play as a, as a regulator of the, of the industry. The work that we, that we do around uh, the appeals committee, uh, the work that we must do to support councils that we work with. And I think in the main, that, that's really the essence of what we're beginning to do, uh, Chairperson. So the slides that I'm going to pro project really, uh, I'm going to go through the first part because I think it's the, it's the known and I think that information is available. Uh, but I think as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a starting point, it is important that we state that we are a shadow free entity, which uh, was established in terms of the, the Act of Parliament. And I think our role really is to perform the overarching role of six councils. I think in addition to those six council uh, chairperson, we have also uh, entered into a working relationship with uh, geometrics, town planners, and environmentalists, just to ensure that we, we appreciate the work that is done by those three councils and, and in the built environment space. Um, I think, uh, Chairperson, the point that we are really making, sorry, the, the, the point that we are making, uh, Chairperson, is that the work that we do is executed through the appointment of, uh, of members, uh, which then is given the mandate to drive and lead the, 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 the council's work. Uh, and that just to, to, to highlight, uh, the members is prescribed in the act in terms of what they do and how, how they perform their function. And I think that's really the, the starting point. In relation to other matters that relate to their functioning, during a, their four-year four term relates to the, 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 the functions that are prescribed in the Act and, and Schedule 3 and 4 uh, around their, their powers and, and responsibilities. I think just to zoom in straight in terms of the question that was raised to us in terms of how do we, what steps have we taken to strengthen our regulatory functions over this council? I think the point that we, we, we make is that the Act is very clear on what the city is expected to do, is to promote and protect the interests of the public in the built environment. And the second one relates to the sound governance. And I think that that's really the point that I was trying to amplify at the beginning, that how do we use the legislative framework to drive the agenda of the, of the, of the built environment uh, in, 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 the, in the bigger scheme of things and working with these councils, not only in looking at the compliance in relation to King 3, which is one of the areas that we've been doing over the past couple of months now, just to check what's the state of this council uh, from a compliance point of view, are they able to execute their mandate? And I think the reports that we will begin to produce uh, will point out to some of the areas that need to be uh, attended to. And I think the, the, the point really share some of the issues relate to uh, filling of those uh, positions in terms of their board members uh, and, and, and some of the issues that we've identified around uh, compliance related issues. I mean, one of the points that I would like to raise in relation to governance issue, we find that some of these councils don't have like your statutory committees, such as your, your audit committees and committees that are supposed to be there in compliance with King 3. But I think that's really the areas which we are trying to zoom in as CPE in trying to assist these councils. The, the third issue uh, relates to how to ensure that there is uniform standard in terms of the policy framework that go governs the work of these councils. As CPE, we do this uh, uh, ongoing evaluation of what policies that exist. What we have established, uh, Chairperson, is that most of these councils do have policies that we've jointly developed as, 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 as the council. However, in some of the instances, you find that the application of those policies uh, gets to be compromised in, in various areas. And, 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 and what we've observed as well is that it's more about compliance, but policies are there. And I think that's an area which we need to start uh, amplifying from, from the CPE point of view to force these councils that they must comply with the rules uh, that have been set out in the work that they must do. The, 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 the fourth area which relates to uh, investigation. I think, I think this point, uh, Chairperson, it's an area which we haven't really been able to do uh, successfully as an organization. And it, it has come up in the study that we've actually 
conducting the 20 year review, that one of the areas that we have been doing as CPE is to initiate or assist the department to initiate investigations where there are issues of uh, uh, non compliance in the built environment sector. What we've been waiting uh, or been doing over the past couple of years is to wait for people to report and then and then react. Even that, I mean, because we have a, a toll free line that we've been using, I think the, we, we can do better in this particular area of work. And I think it's an area which we want to build capacity internally so that we can actually augment whatever capacity we have. Uh, for, for investigative capacity so that we can start doing this this kind of work. The work we're currently doing, I think I will share with the, the committee once the report has been concluded uh, in the Western Cape, and we are doing an investigation which was reported to us as the organization. In, in relation to um, the, 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 the complaints that we received, um, I think I have actually touched on some of these points. Uh, we, we assist councils in terms of the, 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 the review of their policies. Uh, we also uh, ensure that they perform, we perform the advisory role where it's possible and ensure that all the policies within the built environments are, are, are aligned. However, uh, the challenge that one has observed is the application and implementation of these uh, policies that we all have as various councils with that falls with CPE. In, in relation to promoting the, 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 the work around the, between the councils and higher education, especially around the accreditation, CPE is a member of all the councils. When, whenever we go for accreditation, we, we, we do participate in those processes. But I think we can amplify the, the role that we play, not just being a participant uh, in the process. And I think one of the issues that I think was raised in one of the portfolio committee meeting or with the DM or the minister, was the role that we play in ensuring that universities begin to take issues of transformation seriously. And I think CPE can drive that mandate, not just to accredit the courses that are offered in universities, but maybe as a criteria to say, unless you meet the following key criteria or key post, uh, points, we are not going to be able to accredit your course. And, and I think it's an area which we also have to start uh, attending to. I think that the, 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 last, the last two points around the just governance related matters is the, the ability for CPE not only to receive reports from these councils, uh, be it annual reports or be it their quarterly uh, reports, but also to interrogate the kinds of information that is coming through and advise the, the minister and the portfolio committee on some of the issues that we might be picking up. Those issues might relate to uh, I wouldn't say liquidity of those of those organizations, but they might touch on issues of governance, issues of non-compliance, uh, and, and some of the issues that we think requires uh, attention, which I think maybe as an organization we need to start uh, elevating on an ongoing basis so that it's not wait for the problem to become bigger. And by the time the matter uh, has escalated and then it requires drastic intervention, I think we can pick up some of these issues from the reports that we, we receive from, from councils on a on a quarterly basis and i think that's an area also chair that we want to play uh, pay attention to and not just to be a, a value chain where we receive and submit but also try and, and excavate information that would be useful in intervening when it is necessary i think chair the, the slides that I'm, I'm going to project really is just to indicate that as things stand we are sitting at 56,000 registered professional the reason why we thought this information was important chairperson it's not just to indicate the numbers, but it's to just demonstrate that there has been a fluctuation in terms of the, 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 the numbers of professionals that are within our, our, our database. And I think it calls for a particular approach on how best we look into these numbers because there is a, a, num a decrease in which we can't explain. I think when we engage with councils, uh, we realize that some of the issues that they are raising is that their members, some of them don't continue with the registration because either they lost work or they're unemployed, so they don't register. So I think it's an area that actually gives us an indication about the state of the built environment. So I'm gonna zoom through this slide, uh, Chairperson, because the point that I'm, try I'm, I'm trying to address is almost the same, except that uh, the issue of transformation of the industry remains. And I think the second point uh, that I'm raising with, this, with these slides relates to the fact that we've got a high number of candidates that are sitting at a candidate's uh, level. And these candidates, they sit in there 
One, the, it what we've observed is that they go through a board exam and they don't succeed. And uh, one of the observations or information that is coming up from the work we are doing with various provinces or various uh, entities is that candidates might be exposed to a particular area of work and, and not the other aspect which might assist them to go and write exams. So when they go and write exams, you find that they haven't been exposed to the entire value chain that enables them to actually go through the provisional registration. As such, they then sit as, as candidates for a longer period. And, and the second issue, which I think we are beginning to, to, to unravel, relates to the fact that as candidates, they get appointed, especially in government, uh, on an OSD, which is attractive. And I think some of them, they, they just sit there because, I mean, there is, there is an incentive being a candidate because you are paid on an on a, on a OSD package. And I think it's something that also we should look at. It's a matter that the, one of the TCC is attending to together with the department. Um, I think, Chair, the, the slide really is self-explanatory in relation to uh, the, the demographics. And I think I've touched on this, Chair, that we have also entered into a various MOUs and some of the entities as well, or councils within the CBE, have different uh, accords with uh, various international bodies. And I think those bodies as well assist us in ensuring that we, 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 we keep the standards of, of of the professions up to date and, 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 and be in line with what uh, is happening globally around the built environment. Jefferson, I think, I think here, I just wanna make a couple of points that um, yes, in the act, it talks about us um, reporting on a number of cases that we received and whether those cases were dispensed within the 60 day period that has been prescribed in law. And I think that's very useful to say within the first quarter we received so many, we process them and 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 we're, we're able to meet the timeline. I think that's really the basic. Uh, if I have to use the KPI, it's a basic KPI. But I think the second KPI, chair, which I think uh, we we are beginning to pick up, is to say which councils are having complaints, and what is the nature of the complaints, and what interventions we must make because. It's, it's well and good for us to say we received so many as CBE, we, we dispensed of them, or so many were lodged with these particular entities or this council, and they were able to dispense of them. But I think the critical point now relates to what is the nature of these complaints? Because some of them you find that it's really about the point I was making about non-compliance with the, the, the policies of these councils, um, the manner in which we run uh, some of these uh, processes. And I think, I think that's really the point, Chair, that uh, uh, perhaps uh, as, 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 a, as, a, as an output uh, at the end of the financial year, we need to begin to say, yes, we received so many, we concluded them. However, these are the kinds of complaints we are receiving, and this is the kind of intervention we're going to do. So for this financial year, that's what we intend to do. At the end of the financial year, we will then develop a report that will then uh, be able to present a clear picture on the nature and the the councils that are struggling with the number of complaints, because that points to the point that I was raising around non-compliance, uh, some of the issues that we are picking up in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in this in this council. The the, the, the the other point here that we want to raise is that in in strengthening the the kinds of function that we must do, because some of the issue there might be policy non-compliance, but they also relate to legislative requirements. And that's what we've done, we've established what we call legal forums. Uh, which then assist councils to try and attend to some of the issues that might be of legal in nature across this, uh, the six councils or the nine councils now. Uh, that includes the town planners and, and environmentalists and geometric uh, co colleagues. So, so, so I think that forum is going to assist us in ensuring that some of the issues that are picking up of non-compliance and, and, and are attended to in that, at that forum before they become uh, bigger than what, what we've been experiencing thus far. The, the second the second committee that we have chair is the rich trust forum i think uh, it's it's a working committee than a forum um what we do we meet on a on a quarterly basis with all the registrars and we attend to specific issues that affect the industry the case in point is the issue of idol um which we've been able to to i wouldn't say close the matter but i think uh, there was an impasse between uh, some of our councils as well as the competition commission and we've been able to find each other and that matter is currently being attended to i think we'll be able to report 
uh, positively in the next uh, round of engagement with the committee. That's one aspect. The second aspect relates to the work that we are currently doing through one of the TCCs uh, around the establishment of a, a transformation code, a sector code for the built environment. And I think uh, that initiative was initiated by colleagues from SACAP, and I think it was embraced by all the registrars. And I think it's a process that we want to contribute. Obviously, it will go through the department uh, for it to gazette and, and take it through the process. But as registrars, we are actually uh, formulating a position which will then uh, assist the, the department in, in concluding the process. There is another structure chair which has, has been functioning uh, within the, the council. It's called President's Forum. So, and, and I think the approach that was taken by Dr. Lamine was to say it has to be rotated among the councils. Uh, this one will be chaired by Dr. Lamine, the other one will be chaired by uh, Mr. Gossip from ACCPMP. And, and, and the other one which had by Ms. Refile from, uh, from EXA. And I think at the, at, the, at the core of what they discussed there is the areas of commonalities and, and, as, as councils and how do we drive the agenda of, of the built environment. And I think that the, the, last, the last two points, Chair, I'm going to deal with them in the next couple of slides, but just to introduce them. It's the, the, the INDABA resolution of 2019, which agreed that we must establish the transformation collaborative committees it has taken longer for these committees to, to, to find traction. But I think now, Chairperson, I can confidently report that they are well functioning, they all have chairpersons, and the response that we've received uh, in terms of the issues uh, is, 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 is positive. Just to give committee the overview, uh, we have one that deals with issues of procurement, police, legislation, and social economic development. And I think this committee has been functioning uh, fairly well compared to others. Uh, I mean, we've been able to make submissions as part of the procurement bill, as part of the NIP 2050, um, and, and, and a number of policy proposals that we've made uh, has come through from this policy, amongst others, the issue of uh, uh, conducting the road star, which I think was uh, revived by my, our colleagues from the Western Cape, and, and they've presented at this forum, and then I think other provinces are beginning to take, take interest on the work that we must do. Through this committee as well, we've been able to engage with the retired uh, engineers uh, who were part of the Zondo Commission in terms of what are the issues that came through from the commission that affects the built environment, which must be treated and, 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 and ensure that we attend to them. So, so this committee has been very active. The second one, I think it's an issue around OSD, which I've touched on. Uh, I mean, we've been engaging with the PSA around the issues of um, uh, OSD and why our candidates remain uh, as candidates for a longer period. And I think that committee sees that particular issue. The, the third one is health and safety and public protection. I think this committee started functioning. I think we've hosted like twi two meetings already. Uh, it's chaired by Mandisa from, uh, from SACAP. And I think the point really there is that one of the investigations that I was referring to um, emanated from this committee. And I think uh, once the report has been concluded, we'll be able to, to share with the committee and, and the ministry as well. And, and, and the, the, the other committee that uh, was established from Indaba is the Women Empowerment and Gender Equality. This is one of the committees that's been actually very functioning as well. The attendance there has been great. And some of the speakers that are coming through, or the colleagues that are coming through from the Department of Women and People Living with Disability and the, and the sector itself, we've received a very good positive input from, 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 from these leaders. As to the extent that Jefferson, we are the minister or the DM will be hosting a webinar uh, on women's issues who are in the built environment and the construction space. And I think that's the, 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 the nature of the work that we are currently doing around this particular area. Uh, the, the, last, the last one relates to the professional skills and capacity development. I think this committee, Jefferson, is a very important committee because that is where the bulk of the work in terms of professionalizing the built environment happens. Uh, arising from the MOU we had with the NSG, for example, we are now developing programs uh, that will target mainly the, the, the public uh, servants who are working either in departments such as human settlement, water affairs, transport, and others who are basically responsible for rolling out bulk infrastructure programs. However, they're not professionally registered, and I think we have to create a carotene stick to ensure that people come and register because we place young professionals in these, uh, in these departments. However, the people that uh, they report to 
are not registered with this uh, with, with councils and therefore they are not able to assist them with supervision and signing of their reports. So, so Chair, I've actually touched on all of these issues when I was addressing the, the first slide, but I think the next slide really just to highlight some of the interventions that we've been able to do, and some of them are part of our, our APP, uh, which we'll be reporting on on a quarterly basis. So what we've done, we have institutionalized the, 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 the transformation and the collaborative committees. Uh, within the CBE now, there, is, there are four, um, uh, I'll say, subdivisions, which are overseen by the, the COO. Um, who are focusing mainly on the on the on the on the areas that I've, I've alluded to, and the work that is done is also not only on the outside of the entity, but it's part of the the, the APP that we've submitted to the Parliament. So I'll just skip through these uh, slides, uh, DM and, and check us in for the for the sake of saving time, um, and and just to indicate that in doing this work, chair, I think the point that I was making earlier was that we, we acknowledge that from the, from the premium results that are coming from our 20-year review is that CPE has been internally focused over the passage of time. And, and, and as an overarching body, yes, we, it's important for us to, to, to ensure that we are functioning as an organization, but our mandate has to be about how these councils that we work with function. And uh, hence the, the, the posture is to be out, out, out uh, externally focused now moving forward. And I think the, the TCCs are providing us that platform to, to be able to address some of the issues that affect the industry, not only CBE. Um, the, 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 I, I also spoke to this point, Chair, that when I was addressing the issue of IDO, um, and I think the point that I was making there, Chair, is that we, we are busy with the, with the Commission Commission to resolve some of the issues. We've been able to coordinate the work between the, co the Commission and SACEP and now we are busy with EXA as well as SACPMP on some of the issues that are outstanding. And I think we should be able to find each other. I did uh, allude to the fact that uh, in recognizing other professions, we've got MOUs with uh, the, the town planners, environmental practitioners, as well as geometrics council. And I think that's really to ensure that the entire built environment is, falls within CBE. And I think that's a process that we want to, to put forward. Uh, Chairperson, um, I think some of the issues that we want to raise, um, I, I think I think this point number one, I think it can be contested. But I think we, the point that we are making is that the act is very broad. It gives us all the kinds of powers. And I think the point I was making is that perhaps we haven't been paying attention to what we actually supposed to do. Maybe stagger it in a in a strategic manner to say if we have um, 20 points uh, in terms of the act that we are supposed to attend to. Um, how, how do we address point A, point B, point C? So that at least we are able to see whether we are actually implementing the act in its totality. The, the, the second point that we want to raise, Chair, in relation to this slide, relates to some of the disputes. Uh, for example, if there is a, an appeal between CBE and one of the councils, depending on the nature of the appeal, they, they, it tends to create, um, I wouldn't say tension, but I think uh, there is also that lack of commitment if the appeal or decision goes against uh, the CBP. Uh, and I think it's an area which I, we think requires maturity more than anything. Um, and I think the point that we're making that as much as we want to do all of this work around ensuring governance and processes are adhered to, there is capacity that we're building within the organization. And I think we, we can uh, we can put that to the committee. I think we are just flagging it so at least the committee is aware that we want to do this work and we're building capacity internally. Hence, our microstructure has been revised and approved by council. And, and there's also another point that Chair want to make. What we picked up in terms of how councils function is that they, there is a practice and there's a policy. What normally happens is that councils tend to adhere towards what has been the norm and how they do things. When you say, look, but the policy does not enable you to do that, it creates a problem or a tension between us and, and, and some of these councils. Um, this point, Chair, I think it, it's, it's, it's a point that we, we, we need to find a mechanism. I mean, if we look at the act, the way it's structured, it says council must nominate members to serve the CBE. And, and I think uh, it's human nature, Chairperson, that uh, there will be a, a conflict of interest that arises because some council, I, I, I recall that at some stage, I was told that CBE chairperson had to buy caps, uh, caps for CBE and caps for, 
where council members come from. So when they come to CBE meetings, they will be given a cap written CBE to ensure that they must understand that when they serve at CBE, they're not representing their council that actually seconded them to CBE. They are appointed by the minister to serve at CBE. And I think the work that we must do in training council members together with the department will also assist. Um, the, the last point really relates to uh, the challenge around uh, mechanisms to, to, to deal with uh, misconduct by council members. Yes, there, there are, there are uh, professional, there are rules and regulations and, and policies, uh, for example, at CBE, but I think uh, the, the, the eating is in the, uh, the, the tasting is, is, is the one that's going to assist us in, in, in ensuring that when council default, they're able to be submitted to a process, but it goes hand in hand with the training that must be undertaken. Chairperson, having stated all those problems that I've uh, listed in the previous slide, we, we do think that there are some uh, proposals that we'd like to put forward, which will submit through the departments in relation to some of the areas that, that can be uh, augmented in the act. And we also do appreciate that it's, it's, it, it takes long to, to make such amendments. Be it amendments through the, the actual act or through regulation, I think the proposal we can, we can put forward, and I think that's what we're busy with, but we thought let's share that with the committee. The, the second issue is that uh, we have agreed um, as councils that perhaps we need to have an awareness campaign about one, what is the role of these councils? Because they, there is a, a misunderstanding on what councils do and what they don't do. But the second issue, deal with the issue of the CBE as an appeals body, <coughs> excuse me, and how best we can then uh, publicize that kind of work. The, the, the third issue, I think, in our, in our microstructure that has been approved by council, there is a, a huge emphasis on the establishment of a shared services model. And I think it's an area which we need to canvas with council and ensure that it's supported around policy, around training and, and M&E work, as well as compliance reviews that I was alluding to. Because if we can amplify this work, we'll be able to address some of the issues that committee members might be concerned about. And also hold regular workshops about the work that we do as a council. And I think the last point uh, is to develop the codes of conduct for council members. And I think uh, we need to submit a proposal uh, to the department, which will then assist uh, the, 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 the councils to do their work. Chairperson, let me stop here for now and, and thank you for the opportunity and apologies for uh, my voice. I'm a bit fluish and I'm recovering from flu. But thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Um, uh, the chairperson of the board, Dr. Lamini, and, and CEO of CBE, Mr. Mieza, thank you for the presentation. I now invite honorable members to discuss um, uh, this presentation and, and all the issues that have been raised on it. Um, honorable Van Skalweg, Honorable Hicklin, Honorable Suisa, Honorable Graham Mare, in that order, please. Honorable Van Skalweg, Honorable Hicklin, Honorable Suisa, Honorable Graham Mare. Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning to the Honorable Chairperson, our members, the parliamentary staff, the staff uh, or the presidents and representatives from the different councils. And thank you very much for the presentation that we've received today. Chairperson, I am deeply uh, worried about the current state of affairs. I, I see that we are receiving an update but there's no real movement in terms of what we received previous years and also the recommendations that has been made to the different councils, especially with regards to the transformative agenda that's not moving. And we, we know we have prospective candidates, we have learners that's currently uh, 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 pursuing the different careers in, 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 in those uh, fields of, of study. And there's no movement, especially in terms of race and gender. As we look on slide 13, we see 
that in terms of race, there's still a 62% uh, white domination. And in terms of gender, there's only 14% of females. And we've raised this issue several times over the past few years, and it doesn't seem as if there's any movement. Despite uh, 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 us receiving uh, the, 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 the uh, reports on, on, on some kind of, of, of efforts that's been made, uh, especially because uh, in terms of transformation, collaborative committees, initiatives, but it doesn't seem as if it's bearing positive fruits over the past few years. And we need to, to rethink then uh, uh, to say that as the current state of affairs is looking like that, do you have data available in terms of the real movement that has been made in terms of this uh, initiatives? And if it's not bearing the necessary fruits, then you must uh, rethink your strategy and change your strategy because it can't be business as usual when, when we are finding ourselves in this current conjuncture of high unemployment, especially with regards to the previous uh, disadvantaged communities. Chairperson, on slide 16, uh, it, it shows the candidates uh, that, 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 that's currently there, whereby it shows there's 62% of African candidates. And it's, it's a point of concern because if there's no movement, they are uh, studying, they're becoming candidates, but they are not uh, getting to the professional uh, uh, phase. And, and we, we need to be honest, uh, or, or, or they need to be honest with us to, to tell us what are the stumbling blocks, where are the pitfalls, what is leading to the, the, the problem that candidates can, cannot be professionalized, especially with regards to, to, uh, to the high rate of, of African candidates. So we, 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 we need to, 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 to be an uh, informed chairperson whether uh, there, there's some kind of hesitance in terms of the, uh, those individuals who are supposed to, to, to assist with, with the, the candidates in, in, in acquiring their professionalization. Because uh, it's been mentioned by the presenter that they are placing candidates with people not uh, that are not qualified. So I, I don't understand if there are so many uh, professionals in the industry, uh, what is the stumbling block in terms of placing the candidates with professionals that are qualified, who are able to assist those candidates to, to, to move to a professional state. If we can just get some clarification in terms of that. Then I, when I look at the, the complaints chairperson, I see there's six out of 80 com, uh, uh, complaints that have been completed. And that's a point of concern, but uh, I, I, I would get a better picture if we have the age analysis of these complaints to, say, to know exactly how long these complaints have been raised and how long it's been taken to, to address it. But to say six out of 80 co uh, complaints being completed, it's a point of concern to me. I think for now, Chairperson, I'll, I'll pause there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Franz Kalbeck. Honorable Hicklin. Thank you so much, Chair. And thank you to uh, the CBE for coming through with this presentation. Um, I noticed that not a lot has changed since the last presentation, which we had in May of 2022. And I'm just going to go through very, very generally the notes that I have made. Um, my, my points are quite general, so if you'll bear with me. I'm sorry, the, the light in my office seems to be quite bad this morning. I don't quite know what's going on. I don't know if our lighting has been affected by the, the serious load shedding that we've had. Um, the first question I want to ask is, 
first and foremost, is your gender transformation desk at the CBE functional? The second question, um, do you have a company secretary at the moment? The third question, how many councillors are on the CBE board as it stands at the moment? The next question, when you have to use, when, you, when the CBE itself has to investigate any kind of complaints, Ms. Mieza, are you using independent entities for those investigations? Because I think the greatest problem that entities have in dealing with complaints or investigations that you oversee as the CBE or that the CBE itself has is an impartiality problem. I think one of the biggest problems that we have as a built environment professional overseeing body, the umbrella body that is the CBE is a lack of impartiality. And I think that is one of the problems that the CBE needs to have. The CBE needs to be totally impartial. And I think that is one of the things that you need to incorporate in your overarching documentation, in your overarching policy, is that the CBE needs to be totally impartial. I think all the councils need to be totally impartial. And I think that is what needs to be incorporated in all the policies that you draft. So that when complaints need to be lodged or when complaints are lodged and need to be heard, impartiality needs to be the most of overarching prerequisite to the assessment of that decision-making process. Um, so it leads to my next question. The council that governs the CBE, are you core it at the moment? Because when I initially asked for the CBE to come before the portfolio committee, one of the biggest problems that I had was that in the last 20 months prior to my asking you to come before the um, portfolio committee was that there were only eight councillors on the CBE at the time when I asked for you to come to before us. It took 10 weeks before you actually came to us, which was on the 18th of May. And at that time, there were only eight councillors on the CBE. And so my question is, how many councillors are there on the CBE at the moment? And who are they? I know that you went through a very, very rapid filling of posts in the CBE. Can we please have a list of who the councillors are now on the CBE board? Do, do all the councils within the CBE actually correlate right now as we stand? There are the SACAP, SACLAP, ECSA, SACPMP, SACPVP, SACQSP. Do they all correlate? May I please get an answer on that? Um, you you also speak about um, financial reporting being on par. Payments to voluntary associations. Do these reflect in your financial reports as in on slide 10? On slide 11, you speak about uh, registration fees. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, scrolling up to my slide 11 because I just made some notes. I just want to get to it if you'll bear with me a moment. Red professional registration statistics. It says on SACAP, for example, there are 13,405 professionals registered with SACAP. There was an issue with SACAP. I know you're not going into specifics, but I want to ask a question related to it. There was an issue of professionals wanting to boycott SACAP 
because of the problems that existed within SACAP relating specifically to the registration fees that were being charged, where SACAP had drafts people being on the same level as professional architects, and therefore they were saying they were not prepared to pay their registration fees. You made an issue about registration fees um, and the problems that people had with the payment of registration fees. The built environment, CBE, as the council for the built environment, has a role to play in ensuring that professional fees are paid, registration fees are paid, and people won't pay registration fees if they have an issue with the council. Your role as the umbrella body must be to ensure that the issues relating to the registration of the various strata within the councils are normalized and that the registration fees are appropriate per the different bodies. Have you investigated whether they are not on par and whether there are different parity levels? And that is why there was a, an intended boycott with SACA. Um, because if you devalue the, the, the stratus or the standing of an architect, you will not get people to register. The complaints at slide, slide 18 and slide 19 and 20, when you look at your transformation collaborative committees, are they all functioning? Because again, one of the problems that people had with the transformation committees is that they were not constructed correctly. They were chosen, specifically chosen individuals who didn't have the transformation agendas at the heart of what they were doing. And that people who really wanted to work on the transformation committees were sidestepped. And again, this is in the purview of the CBE to ensure that the transformation desks, the transformation collaborative committees are staffed, manned, or womaned as the correct case may be, by people whose agenda to transform the built environment is at the heart of what they do. If you say that the CBE is committed to transformation, let's make this then about real transformation and not just transformation on paper. And then it leads to my final question on this section, who heads up the transformation desk at the Council for the Built Environment? The greatest problem that I see with your with this is on slide 26, which is your current challenges and the limited powers to enforce compliance. Enforcement powers not spelt out in the CBE Act. I think that is a major problem. And I think it's also disputes caused by unfavorable appeal decisions resulting in a lack of cooperation by the councils for the built environment professions. I think that is really problematic. And I think again, that the way to handle that is to have disputes and dispute resolutions handled by totally independent bodies as opposed to bodies with a vested interest. For example, if I have a problem with the chairperson of this committee, I wouldn't want to handle my own dispute with the chairperson of this committee. I would like somebody outside of this committee to handle the dispute between myself and the chairperson of this committee. And that is what I think we need to look at when one looks at dispute resolution. You cannot have someone with a vested interest looking at the dispute. And I think that is the problem that we have when people with a vested interest evaluate or handle disputes within a professional body. 
And if I have any advice, if my advice means anything, may I suggest that when there are disputes within a professional body like the CBE, like SACAP, SACLAP, and anybody else within the built environment professionals, that independent bodies are used to evaluate, to mediate the disputes that are held within this, the built environment and truly independent people handling your disputes these resolutions will not be taken as binding and you will not get any resolution. And I would Thank you, Honorable Hicklin. Honorable Suisa. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chairperson, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit worried um, with, with how things are done in the CBE. And my greatest worry is woman empowerment that is not actually kicking off for, for us to see more women in the built environment being out there. Because it's not like there are no women that are in the built environment. They are out there. What is the CBE doing to actually go out and look for these women? Because I think some of these women are being disadvantaged because they are in places whereby they don't know what needs to be done or they don't get enough exposure to, to the built environment. Uh, shortcomings, uh, I, I saw that you, you say one of the shortcomings that are there is that when candidates come and write, they focus or they, they master or they are exposed to one aspect of the built environment, which leads to them to, to fail their examination or whatever that needs to be done. What is the CBE doing to ensure that actually each and every candidate that comes and writes actually becomes exposed to everything that they need to know about the built environment? I'm also concerned about the complaints, the slow pace of how complaints are being dealt with. And in one of the slides where they talk about that there's somewhere where they say, it's only that I'm using the iPad now. I can't even open my emails. The one of one of the one of the complete one of the things that I saw is that there are pre-existing complaints. Pre-existing, which means that it's either these complaints were never dealt with, and they are not even in the process. The process of dealing with them has not even started yet, and. That the, the way the presenter is saying, the presenter is too vague for me because what are the reasons for incomplete complaints? What are the what are the nature of these complaints? What are the people complaining about? You are too vague for me to understand what what is going on. And then I would touch on the issue of. Unemployment rate is very high in South Africa, and many people want to venture into, into businesses, and they can't do that. I, it's heartbreaking to go on Twitter or on Facebook where we have to retweet. Somebody has got those qualifications, and most of them are in the built environment. You find them standing at crossroads or at robots, putting up their qualifications to say, I can do this, I can do that, but I don't have, a, I, I don't know. I think some of them is because of, they don't know what is the proper procedure or the proper channels to be followed. What is the CBE doing to ensure that graduates from universities or colleges of, of technical colleges, wherever, they actually get exposed. They actually get the opportunity for employment take on in a, in a sense that they will be able to start or venture into their own businesses when it comes to, when it comes to the built environment. But my, my, Chairperson, my greatest concern is 
uh, I would agree with Honorable Van Skalbeek that race and gender, they, I don't see any move, especially when it comes to women. And they don't say anything about people with disability. And it's a, it's a great concern that if the constitution can protect people with disability, and then CBE does not say anything about people with disability, then it, it becomes a, a concern to me to say that are they really trying to get into transformation? We've been talking about transformation for as long as I can remember, but I don't see any transformation that is happening in the CBE. They've got many challenges and they don't give us as to how they are going to deal with those challenges. What are you going to do about the challenges that are on your presentation? There's nothing, you are not saying, you are telling us you've got these challenges, but you are not saying how you are going to resolve those challenges. And if you can't give us how you are going to resolve those challenges, it means that those challenges will be there for the coming, another coming 20 years or 30 years, we don't know. How are you going to address those challenges? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Suisa. Honorable Program, Mare. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, thank you very much to everybody. Good morning, everybody. Um, Chairperson, today's, today's presentation was supposed to be on the steps that have been taken to strengthen the regulatory functions of the CBE. Um, and I'm not entirely sure that that was the presentation we got. Um, we got a lot of what we already know, um, a lot of discussion about their challenges, but very little with respect to the actual steps, the, um, the movement that they're making towards fixing what is broken in, in, the, in this whole um, environment. Um, I was concerned when they showed us the list of members who make up the board of the um, CBE because we've got one national government rep, we've got three reps from provinces, two reps from the councils, four who are nominated from the public, and then the rep of a recently established legislative council, I don't know what that means, so if they could just clarify that as well. My point being that at this stage of the game, that entire board is made up of only two reps who represent the built environment professional councils. So um, what is the role then of the Council for the Built Environment if it's not a representative body of the councils that they oversee? Um, and the, the speaker spoke to the fact that the um, councillors misbehave and, um, you know, they, they are dishonest and, and whatever. These are supposed to be professional bodies. We talk about the built environment professionals. How is it possible that these are the people that are making up these councils that cannot behave in a professional way, that aren't behaving um, effectively? We, we talk about transformation. Transformation can't be done by people who are not taking their jobs seriously. Um, and this has got to this has got to be addressed. Um, again, does the CBE comply with its own regulatory functions? It's it's imposing um, restrictions or it's 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 imposing its wrath on councils that don't comply. Is the CBE itself completely compliant with every single aspect of it? Is there an internal audit committee, et cetera, et cetera? So before you can be um, dictating to, to the other councils, I hope that every single um, aspect of your um, governance is in place and, and is effectively managed. I, I'm concerned about the ongoing obsession with transformation by the CBE in terms of it's like when we complain that there are not enough players of a certain type in a national sports team. When we get to a national level, it's too late to be talking about transformation. Transformation needs to be happening at schools. Transformation needs to be happening at grassroots. It cannot be happening at the end of the process of transformation. So it's all good and well to say, yes, we're concerned about the, the transform. We've been hearing about this transformation strategy for three years. There's been no change. Let's be honest. Nothing is improving in terms of transformation. My question is, what is the CBE doing about going to schools, about identifying young people who can possibly join the, the built environment professions, about um, giving them um, proper education opportunities? If I look at the schools in, in the area that I live in, 
Most of those kids who come out of those schools are lucky to get a matric. If the girls haven't fallen pregnant already and have children and had to leave school, um, if they've been given the correct guidance in terms of subjects, if they've got proper teachers who can teach them maths and science, there are schools where the kids are permanently encouraged to take maths lit as a subject because the teachers are, are not interested in teaching formal maths. And then we're expecting to do transformation once they're professionals. It's never going to happen. We need our built environment professionals to be going to primary schools and high schools and talking about careers in the built environment and then identifying children that potentially would be interested in, the, in those areas and, and assisting them throughout their school career and their, and their tertiary education so that they can get qualified to get that position. Again, also, and I agree with um, my colleagues who have raised it, once they get to the built environment professional um, council uh, stage, it takes forever for them to get accreditation. It is so difficult for them to get through the process. Now, I understand, I spoke recently to the people at the SAC CPCMP, and they were talking about how um, there is so much corruption in terms of people um, falsifying their CVs, they falsify their qualifications, they send through um, falsified certificates. So every single person that comes through has to be so carefully vetted to ensure that the entire process is, is above board. We've got to find systems where we can weed out the people that are being dishonest so that we can give proper support and encouragement to the people that are legit. But it can't start at the built, uh, built environment professional's um, point. It has to start earlier. We have to start developing our young girl children in the right directions, as opposed to just leaving them to languish in poverty, having having children and, and doing nothing further with their lives because they're not giving the proper, proper guidance at schools. Um, and then finally, um, my, my biggest question is, I don't actually understand why we need the Council for the Built Environment. At this stage, I don't believe they're adding any value. Um, I don't think that they are um, bringing anything different to the party that the actual councils themselves can't do. Um, I'm worried that it's just another layer of, of employment um, where people are being paid and there's actually no value for money that anybody is getting out of what the CBE is doing. Um, now, I know that the CBE Act has got to be um, reviewed at some point. What I think we need to look at is what the role of the CBE is that it cannot, that it does above and beyond what the council of uh, the, the individual councils are able to do, um, what value add they bring to those councils, and what value add they bring to the built environment. Um, and if we can't answer those questions, we have to look very seriously at whether there's actually a need for the council of built environment. Thank you very much. Thank you, honourable Graham Murray. Um, thank you, honourable members. Um, Oh, Honorable Trink, uh, I didn't see your hand. Honorable Trink? And Honorable Mclova. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank, thank you. you Honorable Trink followed by Honorable Mclova. No, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, just, just a few <clears throat> a few questions. Uh, the, the, uh, the CEO is, is on record um, as, as saying that we are in consultation. Uh, this, is, this is from the, the engineering news. We are in consultation with the councils planning to massify uh, the mentorship of built environment candidates in all nine provinces, um, ensuring that professionals are registered as well as provided with employment opportunities. So my first question is, in terms of that statement that he made uh, and the quotation, um, if it is him indeed, um, how, how far are they? Uh, in terms of massifying the mentorship of the built environment candidates, um, because this is as we are in consultation. So this is, seems to be still a process, but is there a definitive number uh, with regards to the, the massification um, of uh, the, uh, the mentorship of, of the built environment? Secondly, um, he's, he's also quoted as saying, uh, that the CBE, uh, along with the Council for the Built Environment Professionals, is running uh, critical candid candidacy programs in 148 districts. So, <clears throat> um, what is the what is the status of the 
uh, of those particular programs, those critical candidacy programs. Uh, these programs are supposedly to prepare students for uh, the world of work and entrepreneurship and to give students the experience which, which contributes to future employment prospects. So what is the success um, of, of this uh, critical candidacy program? Uh, and, and what is, and what is the, the level or the status uh, of, of that program? Um, <clears throat> the, the candidacy program is, is also uh, set to produce scarce skills and the qualifications needed by the economy and the government's infrastructure plan. Now, the last time I, I checked, uh, South Africa is lagging behind the rest of the world uh, in terms of the ratio of engineers uh, to, to population. Um, we, we, are, we are lagging behind and continue to drop. Um, and, and so what, what type of progress, if any, uh, has been made to, to increase or to reduce that lag of, of qualified professionals, particularly in the engineering trade, um, per 100,000 of the, of, of the population. And then my final comment, uh, Chair, um, is, is perhaps similar to that of uh, Honorable Gray Marie. Uh, <clears throat> I do believe that we should not become fixated uh, with, uh, with transformation. Transformation, I don't think that there's anyone, um, well, let me, let me say that there are very few um, who will not support uh, transfer transformation. I, I, I do believe that transformation is necessary, but transformation also cannot be forced. Um, transformation, I, I believe that, that non-white black, black people in the main are intelligent. I believe that they are capable. I believe that, um, that, that they are able to hold their own and I, I don't know whether we should be forcing. I come from a situation where I myself um, come from a disadvantaged background, um, having to work hard, having to study, having to um, having to uh, to pull myself up by my bootstrap, so to speak. Um, and and I believe that that um, our our black folk in South Africa are able to hold their own intellectually and, and uh, in terms of, of their abilities. So I, I do not think that putting quotas in place, you know, when it comes to transformation, how many females do we have here? How many males do we have? How many blacks, how many whites, colors? We need to move away from that and look at those who are the most qualified, the best qualified. And if 100% of the best qualified are women, then we take that. But I don't think that we should be moving towards forced quotas um, because we become fixated. And in that fixation, uh, we began to begin to lag behind because the most qualified then move, move elsewhere. Um, so Chair, those are my uh, comments and, um, and questions. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable um, Tring. Honorable Njaba. Uh, thank you, Chaperson and welcome at your report, ESCPE. Um, um, angi respond to Honorable Tring. Kodwa uma eti we can't force e, e transformation. Kujukuti chapesi na hiko kinto sizo ikoka. Ngoba pagati wezinto esi esi funa yugule CPE transformation ebugega ingenzi for the period of three years. So ngabanguti eh, tina as if e e CPE inga wazi ukwenza le le transformation maybe abo Dr Lamin na boba bumsis abageba chelguti yini nzima o tina as members singa legele la ganja ni kule ndo ya le transformation ebu gega kuhu nzima ukuyenza e, number two na le feeling of the cancers e, ibu gega na yu inge nzegi gache e, I think ibalulegi le ndo yoguti bazi valiz tala mboba leo ndo i creator i, 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 I amatuba incidents and bow and up a sense into you understand. So I think transformation is very important. 
Guam, I was, I understand which is Nanga I force, God of Wana Ibaligi, especially in the agenda, who to band best fazan, Gabonga Chaperson. Thank you, um, Honorable. Um, Dr. Lamini, um, Mr. Mieza one, uh, on my comments, uh, the absence of the, um, the, the councils, they are presidents and, and all those that are serving on those councils in this meeting, it's, it's something that I'm seriously concerned with, um, that you are here alone without the councils. Two, uh, I think, we all saw something very unusual when we came in in this administration, the sixth administration in, in parliament in 2019, when we received the reports, even in the legacy report, uh, of how the councils uh, are. They are. Their picture doesn't show uh, clearly what South Africa is. We can then, Honorable Graham Mare, uh, say, today that we can be ECBE must not be concerned with 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 transformation the reality is what honorable Joba is saying why are we here then if if we can't talk about transformation the the, the picture of the councils in CBE it remains unchanged since we raised it in 2019 that these presidents that are, are, because you find out that the president is a black person, but the majority of the members in those CPE are white male members. In all these, in all these councils, then we can't continue with that. I remember one of the presidents saying that uh, his child who would like to study architecture he has discouraged that child because of the environment that is there. We even proposed as this portfolio committee that the CIPD act because they pointed to where the challenge is, it must be uh, sorted out. So that it is easy for anyone to enter this environment, for anyone to participate in this environment. Because one of the reasons people don't want to be registered don't want to participate in this environment because this environment is closing out to black people. It's only open to other races, but when it comes to black people, this, this, this environment really is not, it's not fair. So we will always, as we have done so since 2019, talk that the entity must ensure that there is transformation in this built environment and that transformation must be seen in the councils. So we, we can not say today then, then uh, that, that thing is something that we must not be concerned with. Why should we? No, 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 no. We, we can't agree with that. Um, one of the issues that we can advance transformation here, because you will go to these universities and it's even said, even there, the way that if you are coming from a certain race, which is the majority population of this country, it's not easy for you to enter there. I think it's high time that DPWI and this entity ensure that there are opportunities opened for young Black women, for young Black um male to enter even in the institutions of higher learning and study what will make them participate in this um, built environment in these councils. Because right now, you would rather go to where you will be accepted and participate because it's not easy that we know. That was told, uh, that was presented to us in this portfolio committee by the leaders of those councils telling us, how difficult it is to study when you want to be an architect, when you want to be a landscaper, it's closed. When you want to be a town planner, it's difficult to, to, to go there because it's closed. We need to open up. So one of the things that this um, uh, uh, entity, it must look at that. 
and the department must assist in ensuring that those kids, they study so that tomorrow they be part of the members of, of these councils. Um, the, um, the, the issue of the, um, of the complaints, uh, uh, Mr. Mieza, that, that, that you taking time to resolve them, I think we must improve on that one. So I the, the, the entity is not seen as if it is hiding people that are committing uh, uh, things that are raised by members. I think we all know that there was that case, but we, we were then informed how it was handled and, and all that. But uh, the issue of complaints raised against the, the councils and the entity, we, we must ensure that uh, uh, serious steps and the turnaround time is, 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 is short. So uh, we, you don't sit with complaints and all that. Also the, the membership, um, uh, we were informed once that uh, you have to do a, a, a service and, and all that, and with a company, or sometimes even with uh, the, the department. But uh, recently, the department is not is not providing that uh, that that service. Uh, that is why you'll find some people are not members because they are not getting uh, there. Uh, I think uh, that is one of the reasons we said that there must be an act that forces companies, departments, and all those that provide uh, services to ensure that once you come out of school, you do that in service so that it's easy for you to apply to be a member. So if that thing is not en being enforced even by the department itself, how then do we expect people to be members of this council? Thank you. Um, um, Dr. Damini, um, Mr. Mieza. Over to you, NTM. Yeah, perhaps, uh, uh, th thank you very much, Chairman Sin. Perhaps maybe uh, I can request the uh, CEO to um, just maybe respond uh, in the main on the uh, uh, operational matters there uh, that uh, honorable members have raised. Uh, and then I will come on and on, on, on a few issues um, uh, uh, that I think um, uh, as council um, uh, we have taken a position on uh, in as far as um, the kind of interventions um, 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 uh, that um, uh, are, are, are essential to um, uh, 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 turn things out, turn, turn, turn things around and the kind of strides uh, that uh, a council would have achieved. Uh, over the um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the period uh, since its appointment, uh, CEO. No, Th thank you, thank you, Chairperson, and, and, and thanks, uh, uh, members of Parliament, and, and and chair of the portfolio committee. I, I will I'll, I'll address some of the points, and my colleagues are also on the platform. Um, they will be able to attend to some. Um, there was a point that was raised by member Hans Kalvik. I, th I think the, in relation to the candidates not moving toward professionalization, I, I think the point that we, we, we've made the similar observation that uh, our, our graduates, if you look at the picture, you've got more graduates sitting as candidates versus the professionals. And our diagnosis of the problem is that one <clears throat> is the site where they are placed. Uh, does not empower them to, to, to graduate. And then when they go and write exam, they go and fail, and then they go again and they fail, they get discouraged, and then they remain candidates. So, so what we've been doing as CBE is to come up with a structured mentorship program. Uh, it started as a pilot uh, in the Eastern Cape and, and, and Free State and Kimberley. And, and we started to see the results, but it was a small scale. And I think the point that was made earlier around the necessity of a structured mentorship program that CBE must run is, is exactly the intervention that you want to make. So at least we prepare these young professionals uh, for them to be ready and, and support them to prepare their uh, logbooks as well as their means of verification and their portfolio for the them so at least they can then appear and, and do the board exam. So that's the intervention that we are now beginning to implement. But let me address that question also in relation to the 
question raised um, by Sorry, Lisa. Chair. I cannot hear Mr. Mieza at all. Can you, I ask you please to speak into your mic? Okay. I, I really can't hear a word you're saying, sir. Okay, thank let you. me try. Sorry about uh, that. Thank sir. you, Honorable uh, Hicklin. Uh, uh, we are hearing you when you started to speak, but uh, later on, uh, I think you moved a little bit from the mic. Okay. Please just Can, thank you. Okay. No, no. Let me let me try again. So, sorry, sorry. Apologies about that. I, I was basically saying the intervention that we are making uh, around the candidates who are staying longer as candidates um, is, is to now mystify a structured candidacy program that we started as a pilot a couple of years ago at CBE. Because I think what we're trying to understand, wh why were candidates sitting in, in these uh, spaces for longer period? And we know now the problem is that uh, the sites that, that were placed in, uh, either they were not exposed into the entire value chain. The second issue is that some candidates would be placed or would be employed by state government departments where we discovered that they, their supervisors are not registered. Uh, and as such, they are not able to assist them. So, so as part of intervening in that particular area now, we want to uh, implement this structured candidacy program across nine provinces. Now, in responding to the question that was raised about the statements that were cited in the engineering news on the massification of candidacy program, uh, I think what we have done to date, just to appraise uh, members of the portfolio committee, we have engaged with uh, the DG from Limpopo province and his executive team on the very same matter on candidacy program, as well as how do we massify the implementation of this program in the province. We are developing a, a program that will be tailor-made to, to in Limpopo. We also made, met with the DG from Pumalanga uh, on the same matter as well. One of the propositions that came from uh, Pumalanga was that we need to establish, in a, in a way, the same program, what we call a virtual academy, where in, it's structured when a candidate is placed in a bushback reach in a hospital, they know exactly what they're going to be doing uh, in order for them to graduate at the end. I mean, the, the DG was making an example <clears throat> that, for example, in Bumalanga, the public works department has a, about 4.4 4. 4 billion rand of KPS infrastructure. That's public works and transportation department. We haven't spoken about uh, human settlement and other departments that are running out infrastructure. If we are able to use government uh, levers only, we should be able to absorb a number of candidates and be able to, to have a structured program for them. The same discussion we had in KZN, we also had uh, with, the, with the DG of, of, of Northwest a week ago. Um, we also met with the, my, my counterparts in, in the Western Cape. A public works department who are running a, a, a different program than a, a candidacy program. And I think the point that we're making is that we have identified the challenges, we're now implementing the programs, and, and we're going to start seeing the outputs of those interventions. Obviously, <clears throat> these, are, these are bilaterals that we are having with different provincial entities. And I think in, in the main uh, chairperson, is to use uh, provinces to, to infiltrate these districts that we need to work through. Because uh, we know that in, in the Popo, there are districts that needs to be one capacitated. They might not have uh, professionals in those places. But secondly, they can afford, uh, offer our, our professional, young professionals an opportunity to be able to, 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 to gain experiential training and register and in some instance because the capacity will still be needed in those places it will then be absorbed in those municipalities so it's a it's a multi pronged approach <clears throat> which is aimed at mystifying candidacy program through districts and provincial colleagues and then secondly is also to attend to the structured uh, mentorship program which will then start pushing out these numbers uh, so that people can register and i think i, I think chef is the point really is to say we now have the enablers in place, and we just have to hit the ground running together with our colleagues in different provinces. The, the second point that I want to address, I'm sure the chair will cover others that I've, I've missed, <clears throat> is, is to, is to um, agree with uh, Member Hickling that uh, the independence of CPE is paramount in the work that it must do. And, and currently, the appeals committee is run by independent uh, 
uh, professionals who are not employees of CBE, and their their findings are final and are binding. Obviously, in the act, it says if a member or a council is not happy with the the findings of the CBE appeals committee, for example, uh, they can take the matter to court for review or for challenge the outcome. But I think as as things stands, uh, the appeals committee uh, decisions are final and it's run independently. So so whenever there is a matter that must be discussed, <clears throat> the, 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 the appointment gets made from the panel of service providers, of lawyers, professionals in the industry, uh, who are then able to, to, to ventilate on the matter and make a decision. But the second uh, independence is the, the one that relates to council members. And I think the composition, I mean, if you look at the composition currently, it's 20 members, and, and out of the 20, 12 comes from council. I think perhaps the, obviously uh, the department might have to look into how the nomination process happened because we are the receiving end, but I'm sure DM can address that particular issue. But I do accept the point that there must be the level of independence. Currently, CBE, uh, maybe just to touch on this one, uh, it, it correlates. It's got 16 members that were appointed by the, the minister, and, and, and so those members are currently sitting at CBE. In relation to other councils, um, <clears throat> we, we, we have all councils such, such as EXA, uh, they've got a full membership, um, SACAP, they've got full membership, SACLEP, they, 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 their members or council members were appointed uh, not long ago, uh, SACPMP and SACCPVP, uh, as well as SACQSP, their membership is still under review in the department. I'm sure colleagues from the department will be able to attend to that particular issue. Uh, in addition to the other councils that we've got uh, recognition with, uh, like your town planners, as well as uh, YAPASA, as SAGC, those ones are compliant. Um, <clears throat> I think the issue of, of professionals uh, wanting to boycott um, membership fee, I think it's a point that was raised in the previous meeting by Member Hickling as well. It's a, it's a matter that the industry might have to look into, because I don't think it's only at SACAP, um, the issue of uh, diploma graduates and, and, and degree graduates. And I think it's a contestation in the industry. Uh, for some reason, uh, maybe the way the act has been written uh, enables some of these uh, discrepancies to creep in. And I think it's something that must be addressed because, uh, I mean, <clears throat> it, it, it can't be correct that someone who has done a diploma should be uh, uh, compensated to, similar to someone who studied and did a BSc uh, as well as honours in a particular field. And I think it's it's an issue that councils must uh, collectively attend to. And <clears throat> obviously, one accept that the, 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 there is a recognition of prior uh, learning that must be taken into account. But I think as a principle, we need to accept that if someone went to a a, a, a particular institution is going to come out as a technician and another one is going to come out as a professional and how do you then make sure that those issues are normalized uh, when it comes to registration and I think it's a cross council and it's an area which uh, we need to uh, urgently attend to. The, the issue of uh, who heads transformation at CBE, uh, currently it falls within the COO um, who's Nanam Shong who's currently part of the platform uh, she's leading the transformation within the CBE from, a tra from an administration point of view. But obviously, in terms of the council point of view, it's led by the council members uh, under the stewardship of Member Pepo, uh, who's heading all the built environmental matters that come from different councils. Mr. Um, Wisa, <clears throat> I, I, I accept that uh, perhaps the, 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 the involvement of, of women in the built environment, it is an area that as an industry, we have not really done much. And hence, uh, in, our, in our agenda right now, we, we, we've started collecting a list of uh, uh, women-owned uh, built environment enterprises, I'll, I'll call that. But I think the point that the, the, the DM and minister was asking us, what do you do with that list once you have it? So I think these en engagements we're having in different provinces is to say to the DG, look, there is a list of uh, women-owned uh, professionals that are operating in your province, and and please, when you, when you do uh, request uh, work to be done, here they are. They they've been vetted. They are ready to assist you. The second element relates to people with, with living with disability. I think there was a discussion at one of the transformation collaborative committee, Ouija, 
when the matter of people who are living with disability, there are two kinds of people who live with disability, who are living with disability that we've actually started picking up in the industry. And some of them are participating in the region. Are those colleagues who might have been born um, in an able environment and then later on uh, due to different reasons, uh, they then encounter uh, challenges and they become disabled, but it does not mean that they can't do the work. But there are those who were born disabled and they went through the program. And I think the bottom line is that uh, as an industry, we need to make a dedicated, uh, targeted intervention to ensure that we support the colleagues who have chosen a career irrespective of their disability that they might have. And I think it's an area which I wouldn't say we are doing uh, well in, and I think it's, it's something that must be attended to. There is the agenda desk at CBE, which we just launched recently. And obviously, um, you, you launch something and hoping that it's going to start leading results. But I think we need to do more, not only to publicize it, but also to, uh, through the WG, uh, TCC, in terms of the programs that this desk must do to assist, especially uh, women who are in the built environment. Uh, <clears throat> The other point that we, we also want to agree with Ms. Sinister relates to um, the program that we, uh, I, would, I would say we're discussing with my colleague from the Western Cape, uh, uh, HOD, uh, Jacqueline, relates to how, how can CBE not only look at uh, placing young graduates or creating opportunities for the built environment professionals, but also create opportunities for young uh, people who want to enter into business, what kind of support structures uh, that we must put in place. And I think that, that, that the program that uh, we, we are formulating together with my colleagues from Western Cape, taking lessons from some of the work that is done by CIDB on the support that they do for contractors. We want to mirror that uh, in the built environment, especially the professional, professional side. So, so I wouldn't say there is a traction in that particular area, but I think it's a point well made because there has been an overemphasis uh, in terms of uh, creating opportunities for people to submit CVs and be employed. And to the extent that we're negating those who want to venture into business. As, as, as I think a month ago, we met with the NYDA uh, with a view of trying to say, how can we partner with them? Obviously, we understand their mandate, but how can we work together? with our colleagues to try and come up with a program that will target the built environment professionals and support them. Because one of the observations we made as well uh, from, the, from the study that we are currently busy with is that some of the uh, companies that uh, struggled during COVID, um, professionals especially, besides that they are small in nature, uh, is that maybe they are good architects or town planners or civil engineers. However, they, they, from an entrepreneurial or business management side, they, they found making. So when COVID came, they were easily exposed and hence they were uh, the hardest hit during the COVID. And um, it's, it's not a general statement, but I think it's one of the interventions that we think we need to make and using some of the lessons from this CDB processes that they've actually implemented. And, uh, Member Marie, <clears throat> there are a couple of points that you're raising. Some of them I agree with. Um, and, and I think um, one, one of them is, is that we, we, we need to <clears throat> deal with issues of uh, complaints. And, and I think maybe the point I was trying to raise there was to say what we've been doing for the past of time. I mean, you know that now we're beginning to publicize complaints, that there is a complaint that we received. Uh, this is the nature of the complaint. It's on the website. It will, be, it will sit on this day. And once the judgment has been issued, and also it will be posted on the website. So it's something that we're trying to be one, transparent, two, is to assist the members so that at least they know that if they launch their complaint, it's taken serious, not something that is hidden. And then and any member of the public can also see some of the, the issues that we are making decisions on around the built environment. So that's one aspect. So the, the second aspect um, relates to the CBE compliance. I think CBE has, has all these committees that we, we, we're supposed to co uh, comply with, and in terms of the governance structures and and, and. One of the areas which we, we, we just need to beef up as, as, as CBE relates to the, the issue of outsourcing the company secretary function, which council has taken a decision to externalize that responsibility. And as, as and when we need the company secretary, we have to actually get someone to assist us in that way. The, 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 the other point really is to ensure that then, because CBE has all these measures in place, is to assist council, because some of the countries are small, like SECLEP, Currently, we are sharing an uh, office space with them. 
and they might not necessarily need to have an independent or the committee. We can share the, I, the committee that we have uh, and, and with them. So so there are those shared services that we want to offer our, our councils so that at least we support the, and also maximize the, the, the scale. I mean, one of the functions that we are turning around with the CFO was to assist councils in putting together their financial statements because I think CBE has been able to sustain that particular area of work. So, so those are those areas that we can collaborate around, but to ensure that councils, we don't duplicate efforts where it's permissible, we can work together. In, in relation to how do we get young, young, young people to join the profession, th there are a couple of hindrances that we all know about. I mean, the latest one is the, uh, the business forum, which uh, really is a deterrent in terms of uh, what we see as a parent, you wouldn't encourage a child to get into space. And I think it's a matter that requires a collective effort by all, all parties. But I think we, we did a study at CP a couple of years ago, what is called a skills pipeline. The skills pipeline was actually identifying the kinds of intervention that we need. I mean, uh, give or take a uh, person, it takes about 10 years to produce one professional. If you stick to the timeline, you go to grade nine, at, 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 in a particular school, we encourage young kids to take maths and science and maybe choose a career in the built environment. Some do. When they come out, uh, so grade 9 and grade, grade, uh, grade 10 and 11, when they come out, they then go to university. If they like it, they finish within four years with all the support structures besides funding them that you need to put in place, as well as the, um, the, the mentoring that needs to be provided at university level. When they come out, they need to look for candidacy placement, um, which I think CPE needs to start amplifying, like I was indicating earlier, and then they reach that profession. So a 10 year cycle, that's really what you need to produce a, a professional in the built environment. And I think the skills pipeline was, was indicating the kinds of interventions that are required. And, and, and CPE has been together with councils because some of these functions, we have to do them together with other councils. So that at least we do the awareness campaigns collectively. Uh, we do uh, support to young kids to take medicine science collectively. Uh, we also support kids when they're in the city, not only financially, and we also assist them to prepare for registration processes collectively. So at least the picture that we depicted uh, begins to change. So, so it, it's a long-term intervention that we need to do uh, collectively, uh, and, and, and And I think I've addressed the issue that was raised by Member Frink, um, just to say, we, we've, we've already had engagements with uh, Limbo, Pumpumalang, KZN, Western Cape and Northwest. So five of the uh, nine provinces, we've engaged them on the mystification as well as the candidacy program. And we all in, in sync. And I think uh, we'll be able to target a number of districts that we, we had planned uh, for the annual performance plan. But I think it, it goes beyond that. It's to ensure that the program um, is structured and it can start beginning to yield the results that we want to see. Um, and I think the ratio that we, we, we're talking about as well, and I think one of the points that DM was raising is the, is the CPE as a, not only as a someone that re, re, reacts at the end. So CPE should be able to answer a question. How many engineers do we have in the country? Uh, how many town trainers do we have in the country? If the economy were to change, uh, are we lagging behind or do we need more? Um, currently, I can, I can say to the portfolio committee that from an un unemployment rate point of view, there are quite a lot of quality surveyors and architects who are struggling for work. This is based, based on our database that we collected uh, as CPE. I mean, we're seeing a lot of QSs in an un unemployed database that we have. And that should give us an indication that there is a problem somewhere in terms of the construction sector. Um, the, the, I, I agree with uh, um, Mom Jobo, Jobo that uh, transformation is it's something that we can't shy away from. Uh, we need to, uh, but not slogans. Uh, we need to have programs that are systematic, structured, that we can track over a past of time. So, so I think the, the point there is taken, and I think we need to make sure that we, we do what everything uh, that we can to ensure that we realize the transformation program. Uh, Chairperson, in the last comment that you've made, uh, we, I think together with my colleagues from the department, we will ensure that in the future our colleagues from the other councils come through to this, uh, this session and, 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 and ensure that they assist us in, in attending some of the issues that will be raised by the, the committee. 
and 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 I think that those those are some of the points that I would like to 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 to, to address. I'm not sure whether my colleagues would want to add before the chairperson comes through. If there are any other points that I've missed, thank you, chairperson. We're waiting for Dr. Dlamini. Okay, no, th thank you very much, uh, 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 Um And thank you, CEO, for um, uh, those, those responses. Um, Chapesin, um I I'll just respond on uh, three main areas uh, without going in through the um, uh, detailed um, uh, um, um, uh, um, list. I, I think the, C the CEO has, has, has gone through most of the parts. Um, uh, um, but just to check, uh, uh, um, Honorable Chepesin, am I audible enough? And is the noise in the background better now? I've asked them to reduce it. Yes, you are audible. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, let me proceed then. Um, so, the, 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 the three areas that I would like to respond to, um, um, it's uh, the issue of transformation. Um, I think a, a number of um, uh, honorable members raised the question in terms of um, uh, the kind of strides that uh, um, uh, 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 the uh, CBE is making uh, in this area. And um, also uh, uh, what is encouraging is to, is to hear some honorable members also suggesting that um, uh, perhaps if they are fundamental issues that uh, 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 we are coming across, across uh, we should bring them to the attention of honorable members uh, so that uh, maybe they can assist. Um, fundamentally, I must say that um, uh, yes, whilst the CBE, um, um, from the time we started, I think um, we're sitting at about 73% overall in terms of um, 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 uh, uh, the um, um, uh, um, numbers of um, um, registered pe uh, 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 persons um, uh, that um, um, are, are, are not black. So basically, which means uh, we were only sitting with about 17% uh, uh, black registered uh, professional across uh, the different councils. Um, through uh, interventions uh, such as um, 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 uh, 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 RPL, recognition of prior learning, uh, and uh, some mentoring programs that uh, uh, some of the councils, because uh, uh, we do so from time to time, try to uh, uh, share good practice uh, amongst the different uh, uh, councils uh, uh, so that um, 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 uh, uh, where they are um, uh, 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 um, hurdles, um, other councils maybe can uh, take a leave from what other councils are doing uh, to address those things. So um, uh, the recognition of prior, uh, prior learning program uh, 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 has assisted, and, 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 and we are currently uh, uh, sitting with about, uh, uh, I think we are sitting at 23% uh, now, uh, if you look at uh, the figures across the board in terms of um, a overall uh, black registered professionals. But having said that, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, the, uh, where we found to be um, uh, 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 the, the, the serious, serious challenges uh, uh, to have been, issues of uh, women empowerment uh, and the uh, progression of uh, 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 graduates, the, 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 the main frustration that we have found there is that um, most of um, um, uh, 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 practices that are owned by uh, uh, black people, um, they find it very hard under the current um, uh, 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 pieces of uh, legislation that govern procurement. They find it hard uh, to um, um, uh, uh, compete uh, with firms that have been there for 30 years or some of them even more. Um, so, um, that 
um, uh, uh, hits hard, very hard because if um, a practice does not have work, then they can't absorb any candidates. They can't create any opportunities for um, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, women. Uh, um, uh, women owned practices also find it very difficult uh, to get um, uh, exposure to um, uh, uh, some of these um, um, uh, 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 jobs uh, as a result, again, of um, 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 uh, uh, experience uh, issues. And um, uh, uh, so that is one area where um, a number of uh, propositions have been made to National Treasury and even to our executive authority uh, in terms of uh, the kind of instruments, uh, one of which is the, uh, 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 it's something that uh, was tested uh, 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 previously, I think between 2006 uh, and 2011, um, um, uh, where the uh, Department of Public Works and Infrastructure uh, used to have a consultant's roster. And once you are in the roster, um, 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 work would then be uh, uh, allocated uh, according to um, a, a, a priority and according to a, a workload, how much workload have you got? So even if you were an emerging a, a, a professional that does not have experience, they would start you with a small job uh, a, 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 and then uh, which will then allow you to uh, grow uh, and amass the necessary experience to enable you uh, to tap into uh, bigger jobs. And then as such, uh, you would grow. But since that system was uh, uh, put aside in 2011, as a result, again, of pressures uh, from other uh, um, uh, 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 groups that saw it as a threat because uh, they could see that uh, uh, um, uh, a number of uh, uh, black professionals were really starting uh, uh, to emerge uh, and were really turning the tide in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, 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 um, making sure that uh, uh, the built environment profession is reflective of the demographics of the country. Because that is a reality, uh, uh, colleagues. We, we, we cannot, we, we are not asking to force transformation, but what we are saying is it's only fair that uh, the, um, um, the, 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 the profession must reflect the demographics of the country. Even in terms of a, 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 a geographical a location, work must be spread amongst professionals so that even pro those professionals maybe that practice in, in remote areas are also given opportunities. But at the moment with the current system, um, uh, that is very difficult. So that's why maybe we think that um, 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 honorable members can assist us uh, if that process uh, can be uh, fast tracked. And then it will, it will then also address uh, the issues of uh, women empowerment, uh, uh, making sure that uh, uh, candidates and, 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 and young people uh, that enter the profession uh, do progress within um, uh, at the most, uh, at, 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 at the minimum, most of the uh, council, the, requ the, the requirement is that uh, at least you must have been practicing for, 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 for a minimum of two years. Then you take the professional practice exam and then you can register as a professional. But now, because people, um, uh, it's very difficult uh, to give them the opportunities. What you find is that even um, um, uh, 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 some graduates end up diverting, going out of the built environment space into other uh, uh, sectors of the economy, of which then that is creating a, 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 a problem for us because uh, then it means we will never uh, uh, um, uh, have a situation where um, uh, uh, the numbers uh, of registered professionals is reflective of the demographics of the country because that, 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 that is the ulti uh, ultimate goal in terms of uh, 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 our transformation uh, endeavors. And then um, I think the other um, uh, uh, point that um, uh, I would have loved to uh, uh, touch upon uh, was raised by Honorable Hicklin. Uh, uh, she asked in terms of the numbers of um, um, uh, 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 council members that are, are, are currently um, uh, 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 active. Uh, I think we are currently s sitting at 16. So um, uh, 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 council is correct. 
uh, and I'm sure the CEO can make the names available to honorable members as requested. Um, uh, there was also a question, uh, Honorable um, uh, Hickling, uh, which I did not quite understand uh, where you were talking about whether or not the CPE is making any payments to VAs. Uh, apparently, um, uh, there, there is no obligation to do that. Um, um, uh, but uh, yes, uh, in terms of uh, making sure that uh, VAs are mobilized and they fully participate um, uh, uh, in the um, uh, um, uh, um, in the sector, uh, CPE does that uh, through the TCCs. And then there was also um, a, a, an issue about the um, 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 uh, registration fees. Um, on that one, uh, Honorable Hicklin, um, it has, it's a matter that uh, the councils have discussed, um, especially um, uh, for those councils that have got um, more than uh, one category of registration that um, it is only fair that um, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the registration fees needs to be looked into because um, the um, a, a registration category will also affect your turnover as a professional pro practice. So you cannot expect a person, for instance, that's practicing as a trust person uh, uh, to have the same turnover as a person that is practicing as an architect. And yet when it, come, uh, 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 when it comes to the uh, registration fees, uh, you are still required to all pay uh, the same amount. So that is a, a, a work in progress. Um, and then uh, also uh, uh, the issue of making sure that um, uh, there's common practice uh, or parity uh, in terms of um, uh, 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 what uh, the different council uh, councils charge as fees um, uh, uh, for um, uh, registration. So, um, yeah, the other um, matter, I think um, it was raised by uh, Honorable um, uh, Graham Murray um, uh, with regards to um, um, uh, um, I think it was CBE compliance. Uh, yes, um, a, a council is ensuring that um, a, a, a the CPE does com comply uh, with uh, all pieces of uh, a, a legislation that are, are, are relevant. Uh, and then also um, a, a, in terms of um, a, 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 a ensuring um, a, 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 that uh, we do at the end of the day get the numbers uh, that uh, can assist us in terms of transforming the sector. Um, there are um, a, 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 a number of uh, a, a, a programs, uh, I think the CPE that uh, 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 runs, uh, um, uh, like for instance, uh, they do um, um, uh, uh, management from time to time, uh, do uh, school visits, uh, and also uh, uh, road shows in the universities, uh, 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 and so on and so forth. So, um, need for uh, uh, for the CPE. Uh, I think that question was raised by uh, uh, um, Honorable Graham Mare as well. Um, the CPE is currently um, uh, 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 embarking on a 20-year review. When the um, uh, uh, current CEO was appointed last year, November, uh, this, were one, th th this was one amongst the um, uh, 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 key, key priorities. Uh, that we said maybe uh, he needs to um, uh, 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 look into um, uh, with a view um, uh, uh, to see whether um, um, uh, the C CPE in its current form um, 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 uh, is still relevant or there are any uh, adjustments that needs to be done. So I'm sure once that uh, a 20 year review uh, report is done, um, uh, we can have a, a, a solid ground then to um, uh, 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 be in a position to uh, address that question. Um, and then the, la the, the, the last one um, that uh, uh, I think, um, um, uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson, you did touch on this one uh, in terms of the, 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 the need for transition. The, 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 the way um, uh, CPE has looked at this, uh, is also that um, perhaps um, um, uh, there is also need, I know this might border 
um, uh, in other um, uh, 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 departments, uh, not necessarily within uh, uh, um, um, our uh, 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 Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, but um, there is need to look at um, uh, 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 the uh, academic uh, 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 institutions, um, not just in terms of uh, throughput um, and uh, um, uh, the numbers uh, that get accepted in the built environment uh, 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 courses, uh, but also in terms of transformation in those institutions, um, apparently I, 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 I happen to be also associated with one uh, uh, of such institutions. And uh, uh, my experience is that uh, there is need to have a, 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 a broader discussion in terms of transformation uh, in those institutions, because as a result of that lack of transformation, um, uh, uh, throughput is affected intakes in terms of um, um, uh, being reflective of the demographics of the country uh, is also affected. And these are fundamental matters that I think um, uh, um, um, uh, honorable members maybe can also uh, 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 take at a different uh, uh, level to make sure that uh, 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 there is transformation in those institutions. And I'm sure if we can do that, we will start seeing uh, uh, the numbers uh, 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 flowing because if there is um, uh, uh, um, a bottleneck uh, um, uh, in, 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 in that value chain, um, we can talk about this, but even in the next 20 years, we will still be singing the same song and there would be no change. So we do need to look at this uh, holistically. Uh, and I believe uh, by doing so, we will then be able to see uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the, 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 a kind of strides that uh, uh, would like to see, uh, which will where, where, where we can have a built environment profession uh, that's reflective of the demographics of the country. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lamini, uh, DM, and Mr. Tombeni. Mr. Mtombeni. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, trying to round my camera. Uh, this is a stupid uh, a tablet, so you need to round to <coughs> your computer in order for, for you to have a video. Uh, Chairperson, I want to, to, to make a comment on the appointment of uh, uh, councillors, particularly for the two professional councils. Uh, the councils that deals with project construction management, SACP, CMP, and the, the property valuers. Chairperson, uh, I just want to report that uh, we did receive recommendations uh, from the councils on these two areas for us to, uh, to, to, to finalize or consider the appointment of council members. So this is uh, uh, vested with us now, Chairperson. So it's under consideration in the department. We're doing all the digital diligence and consultation with this uh, uh, council to finalize the appointment. So these are the issues that are with the ministry as we speak. So I should think we'll give a feedback. Uh, I'm sure uh, within um, two weeks, we'll be able to finalize on this matter. So this is what we're doing, Chairperson. And uh, I'm happy that uh, the CEO was able to report on the issues of uh, additional members for the CPE itself. So we're there to support them uh, since our last meeting because there were some vacancies. So we're able to assist in the, the coordinate now. And we're monitoring that very closely. And uh, also talking about the CPE itself, this term is also coming to an end. So we are in the process now where they're dealing with the nomination process. And the department is also participating as a panelist to sort of, you know, uh, uh, assess how the councils do the whole process before it reaches the executive authority. So those are our comments, Chairperson, in terms of how we're dealing with the governance and we're supporting this. The other point which I, I need to indicate, uh, Chairperson, in strengthening this governance of entities. We also try our best to ensure that uh, 
the, the quarterly performance reviews are sort of you know undertaken by the department. Basically, this week um, we were also dealing with the, all the councils. The six councils were able to review their quarter one performance and also looking into the progress for quarter two. And then we did the same with the, the four uh, entities under the Department of Public Works, where we, we, we dealt with their quarterly performance reviews in line with the PFMA. So that's where chairperson were also able to appreciate the challenges uh, which the councils are having, and they lift them. And as a department, we able to work with them to solve all those governance challenges. So far, in terms of governance, we are happy how we interface with these councils and the reporting requirements. We're busy at our level trying to also finalize the annual report as well for taking parliament before end of uh, September as the PFMA requirement. Thank you so much, Jefferson. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, let me then round up this, this uh, one uh, round. Firstly, by uh, indicating that the, the composition of CBE is, is a legislated uh, process um, and, and therefore the representativity of um, the various councils uh, at CBE level it can, it is, 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 is not a matter that we can run away from. It's a matter that uh, is, 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 that organization is by design a representative in, in nature. And, and therefore this issue of uh, independence and impartiality uh, there's a there's a thin line um, that that um, guides the, the 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 responsibilities and um, the the functions of the council members who represent the interests of the profession a specific profession in the umbrella body called CBE. And therefore for us to say they must be independent and, and impartial, it, 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 it becomes a, a, a very difficult uh, uh, balancing act uh, for, for, for to, to determine that. Because their role is to represent the interest of their profession in the council. Um, the composition of the council, there are people who are necessarily, do, do not necessarily represent uh, the specific council, but who would be taken generally from the, 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 the sector of the built environment, or even outside of the sector for that matter, your lawyers, your, your um, accountants, and, and those people who assist with the other skills. But let us not, uh, uh, remove our eyes from the fact that the the, the two councillors from the the the, the councils, uh, the professional councils, represent the interests of the profession in the council. That is but one. But then, when they deal with uh, appeals or complaints. They, they would have first met that complaint or the issue in their council. When it then reaches the appeal stages, the, 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 the code of good governance, it does dictate that they then cannot sit and listen to an appeal that they had inter, in, interacted with at uh, the complaint stage, initial complaint stage. Now, that, that is not a matter of representativity. That is now a matter of, it, it now becomes a matter of corporate governance and good governance. And therefore, 
when the CPE appoints uh, people to listen to an appeal, uh, they should be then sensitive to ensuring that they do not take the same people who were part of the, or who had had a share of interacting directly with the complaint at the initial stages of the complaint. So I would want our, us as members also to be able to differentiate on these different roles um, and not mix them because once we mix them, then we, 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 we come up with, uh, with um, issues that should not necessarily arise. My, my next point is on, uh, on, on this issue of, of people paying uh, the, the, the same, the draftsmen and the, I think it was the, the architects. Uh, if, if my understanding is, is of the question or of the issue being raised, is incorrect, you'll, you'll correct me, Chair. But if uh, the, 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 the rates that um, the two are, are being paid are the same when they do work, um, it then means that that would that work would have been of equal value. The point I want to make is that you are not paid for having studied BSc or having studied a diploma. You are paid for the work, the worth of work that you produce. Uh, to, 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 to illustrate my point, I'm going to make an absurd, uh, um, uh, absurd um, example. If I study to be a doctor, seven years, I'm Dr. X, and I then out of whatever reason end up being appointed or employed as an as a as a clerk, I will not be paid the salary of a doctor. I will be paid the salary of a clerk because the work I produce is not that of a doctor. It is that of a clerk. And therefore its worth is that of a clerk. So I, 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 I wanted us to differentiate these matters even advise CPE because listening to both the issue being raised by Honorable Hicklin and the response from uh, Dr. 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 Lamini, to me it, it, it reflects a misunderstanding uh, of why would you pay uh, and what are you paying for? and what you would you be paid and what would you be paid for versus the qualification you have as an individual. So for me, we, we just need to make sure that we, 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 we differentiate on those. On the, the question of uh, the, the, the conduct uh, of the professional conduct of members of councils, all registered uh, councillors sign a code of conduct or are subject to a code of conduct which they are expected uh, to professionally um, work in terms of. And, and, and that code of conduct, yeah. when one goes outside or performs outside of that conduct, um, then one has breached the code and will therefore be subject to the steps uh, indicated in the code for that breach that they would have 
done. And, and therefore for me, um, if, if there are issues of um, conduct that, or misconduct uh, that the councillors would be doing, um, it, it then means the council must, uh, must uh, employ uh, those steps that the code of conduct uh, provide for, for, for such breach. I think um, the, the, the CBE would be best placed to coordinate the report that uh, Honorable Hickling was referring to. Uh, no, in fact, it's, it's Honorable Fans Kalkvik, not Honorable Hickling. Honorable Fans Kalkvik was talking about the age analysis of uh, complaints. Um, when they say they've dealt with six out of 80, um, as, as uh, what is the age analysis? Uh, they would be best placed to uh, coordinate that, that response. My, my last point is on transformation. <clears throat> um, for me, if the, the issue of transformation, uh, um, Honorable Grandmother, uh, I may agree with you to say the problem is not going to be only, I would, I would have agreed with you 100% only if you had included only. It is not going to only be addressed at the level uh, of professionals. It will be to speed it up will mean that the councils must have all of them. CBE must coordinate all of them to have programs that go to schools. But we can't say we will wait for those programs uh, to bear fruit because those programs are not going to take the three years, the two years that we, 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 we are in office. Those programs are going to take the, the duration of the learners at school and post school, that is a tertiary level uh, for us to see the difference. But I must indicate that the few steps that we have already taken just uh, yesterday in the report from EXA, uh, one of the councils, I would want to use the uh, statistics. So if my, if my picture disappears, understand uh, Chair that I'm using the direct report that they submitted, which I was interacting with yesterday morning. But this report for me, illustrates the extent to which we have been able or we are progressing in changing the picture. They say in, the, in, the, in their register, they currently have uh, 50,406 registered uh, uh, engineers. Oh, yes. And Amongst those, uh, 33,313 are professional engineers and 16,919 are um, candidates that they have registered. Now, if you just oppose the professionals, the professionals, um, against this, this 16,000, you would say, what we have on the professionals register is double what is on the uh, candidates, candidacy level. Now, on, the, on, that, on that register, of that 50,406, 31,000 plus of them are males. 
and just about a, a prof, well, a professional maids, and three thousand of them are professional females. But on the candidacy list, you have twelve thousand who are candidate males versus five thousand who are candidate females. Now, that, that then reflects that the rate at which the candidacy is changing, um, because in the professionals with regards to females, you have 3,000, just above 3,000, but in the candidacy, you are close to doubling that. But just on those that have been registered from um, April to June this year, 2022, um, they, 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 are, they are 415 of them that are registered and 150 uh, that are female that are registered. And breaking down that, um, that stats, age 22 to 30 is 340. Age 31 to 40 is 176, which means the younger ones now are increasing in numbers to join. And we then go to race, which is my next area of importance. Africans that are constituting that uh, uh, number are 386 Africans. Asians are 34. Whites are 100, 103. Indians 19, colored 21. Whether we like this segregation or not, honorable thing, it is there. When the constitution says we must heal the divisions of the past, it means we must take active steps. We must make decisions that are going to influence that healing. That healing is not just going to come only through um, ensuring that there are children at school who register. It means we must take active decisions and steps to change the picture. I'm trying to say Honorable Van Skalvik, we may have fallen short in, in, in bringing this to the fore in this presentation, because this presentation in, in how we interpreted it, it was saying, bring us steps that you are taking to regulate, um, to strengthen, that, that function of regulating. And, and therefore these programs are there, they are being implemented. At the Department of Public Works, we have a unit that deals specifically with professionals. We go all out as, as the department, that unit goes to provinces and I'm emphatic in my interactions with all the councils in saying you are not Gauteng councils, you are South African councils. And therefore in your actions and your programs, they must reflect the provincial uh, outlook per province so that we see what is the picture in the country with respect to transformation. And, and therefore their reports are designed as such. Uh, I'm, 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 I've just picked up 
the exa report we can go on into the others but for me it is to kind of reflect and show the honorable members that actually we may say there is no change but actually there is change um, that is is taking place with respect to transformation but also just how members themselves reflect on this on this report the kind of uh, uh, um, proposals and inputs that honorable members are putting to the fore reflect the complexity of transformation some say no you can't do it at, uh, can't do it now wait um, others say we need it yesterday because this is a thorny matter which re requires a, a strategies. It requires thoroughly thought through processes in order to realize the fruits that we would want to see. We, we can have no um, equality that, we, that the, 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 the constitution um, provides uh, or guarantees us without taking these steps, uh, honorable members, we cannot heal these divisions of the past because we're talking about this because of the past we come from. And for us to heal those divisions, we must take decisions that will help us do so faster. But more importantly, the very preamble for me, the preamble, it sets the tone for the constitution. It talks to us freeing the potential of each person and therefore ensuring that there are opportunities, um, race and gender uh, and disability cease to be matters that prohibit um, freeing that potential of each individual. And, and, and therefore, that's a constitutional imperative that we are dealing with. Um, and I can, I, I, I dare say, Honorable Chair, it's, it's a task some of us don't take lightly because it's a task some people died wanting to see an, an, an equal society, um, equal not only in, 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 in front of, or in terms of the law, but in, in terms of humanity, in terms of justice, in terms of all aspects of life. That being said, then let me take them, I may have said a, a, a lot, but I think I, I needed to clarify some of the issues that the honorable members are grappling with because the fact that uh, we, we are commenting in the manner uh, that seeks to be like we are on opposite uh, ends is, is, is the reality that South Africa is. Uh, but for me, I said earlier, we are in the Heritage Month, which is giving us an opportunity to reflect where we come from, where we are going to. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Back to you. Thank you, um, DM and Mr. Ntombeni and, and uh, the chair of the board of CBE, the CEO of CBE, for your um, responses um, on the inputs and comments that we made. Uh, I will allow uh, Honorable um, Higlin to come back. She has raised her head. Uh, earlier on, uh, but looking at the time, we need to be out of the meeting by 12. Uh, we are given nine to 12, uh, honorable members. Honorable Higlin, just just uh, one point, not not the entire uh, presentation point, thank you, earlier Chair. on. Thank you. thank you, Chair, just one point. It's to the DM, thank you, Chair. Um, DM, the comment that I made about the architects and the drafts people being charged the same professional fees. This comes directly from SACAP. 
SACEP itself is charging drafts people and architects the same registration fees. It's not that they are being charged that by anybody else. It is SACAP itself who is forcing drafts people and architects to, to pay the same registration fees. I have this in black and white on record. It is not them that is doing that. It is not them who is who are applying for the same work and being charged the same. It is SACAP who is forcing drafts people to pay uh, architects to be put on the same level as a drafts person. And my argument is, why would somebody spend five years or however many years getting a professional degree from a university to be put on the same level as a drafts person? It is unfair. That's the point. Thank you, um, Honorable Hicklin. Um, uh, I, I think it's more of a comment. Uh, uh, only DM, 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 DM. Please, uh, just, just, just a, 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 a one sentence response. No, 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 Jay. Um, if you recall, the Dr. Lamini did say they are attending to the matter, but mine was coming from just wanting to be sure and clear. I even said, if if I'm I'm incorrect, please correct me. Um, now I I get what uh, Honourable Member is saying, and this is what uh, Dr. Lamin said they are attending to. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, thank you, DM. Thank you again, uh, honorable members, for your constructive uh, inputs and deliberations in, in this um, report that we received from CBE today. Um, the, the reality is that we will never saying, stop saying transformation when we see that transformation has not yet been addressed. In fact, uh, we are really, really a Sisemva, Kasi Tetayo, Geke City, Sikululekile from 94, Goku, Gu 2022, Kodwa, issue a transformation has not yet been addressed in our country. So up. So with those words, um, um, the team, DM, uh, and your team, um, a chairperson of CBE, CEO, and your, and your team, we really appreciate what you uh, 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 did today, your presentations and your responses um, and that clearly um, assisted in some of the issues that we did not understand. Thank you again, uh, honorable members on that. Ms. Martini say, um, are the minutes of the last week meeting already so that we deal with them just uh, within these five minutes that is left of our time? Yes, sure, they are. I'm just, I'm just concerned that they were not sent to members uh, more than Oh, advanced. okay. No, 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 that one, that one is wrong. We can't deal with them uh, when they were not sent to members because members had to read them uh, before we, 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 we deal with them in the meeting. So on, on, on that note, uh, honorable members, just a reminder that uh, today we will be uh, discussing the expropriation bill uh, that is before the, the, the parliament. Um, all the political parties will have a bite um, uh, today. All the best, uh, honorable members, all the best. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned. See you in the plenary at three. Back to you, Chair. It starts at two today. Recording stopped. It's Thank two. You. Yeah, boy. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah, must yeah. remember that. It starts at two o'clock. It Ooh. starts at two today, not at three, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
Goodbye, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye.